electrolytes, sodium, potassium, and magnesium necessary for cells to communicate with each other, necessary for muscle contractions, necessary for your brain to work right. Here's the three best ways to use electrolytes. Pre-workout, use it as a pre-workout or with your pre-workout to improve your athletic performance, your pumps, your strength, and your recovery. Here's the second one. Before cognitive performance, you have a test coming up, you need to study, take some electrolytes. Loss of electrolytes or too low of sodium, magnesium, potassium can reduce cognitive function and can reduce your, your memory, it can make it harder for you to remember things. Here's the third way. You wake up throughout the middle of the night to pee often, have some electrolytes before you go to bed. The sodium helps you retain water, reduces the amount of times you have to wake up to pee, thus improving your sleep. Those are the three best ways to use electrolytes. In regards to the cognitive one, mm -hmm. why is it then we feel tend to feel sharper and more clear-minded when we do like a fast? Oh, that's different. That's different. So, so when you fast, you naturally it's will produce like ketones. Eh? You, well, well, that's if you're in ketosis. But what happens when you fast is your body starts to produce more catecholamines, epinephrine, mm -hmm. norepinephrine, cortisol. Cortisol feels good. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening. Now, you really want to kick ass, fast, and then have electrolytes. So no calories. So you still get that. Plus, you get the electrolytes. Now you're on fire. In fact- Yeah, that makes me want to do that now. Yeah. In fact, some people will fast, and because their electrolytes are low, they'll feel like garbage. And then you have them add some sodium or whatever to their water, and all of a sudden they feel amazing. Because I haven't done this yet. So we, I, you know, I just, it wasn't that long ago when I did do a, a three day fast, but I did not utilize Element. And now you make me want to do that. Like, I wonder if I would notice a cognitive boost. I mean, I already feel a little bit sharper when I'm fast. Uh -huh. I wonder if I would feel that elevated even more if I was just the water that I was, because I was drinking. You end up drinking a lot when you're, when you're fasting. You keep one, just keep your mouth busy and hydrated, right? But if I was actually, using element every time. I, I wonder if I would notice it. I, I did it when I would fast. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, I noticed, okay. yeah, this is even before we worked with element. I would just add uh, sodium and salt to my water and I had magnesium and potassium pills. Yeah. I had to buy everything separate. And it was a big difference. Because you know when you fast, you can get those muscle cramps or this mm -hmm. one was common with me. About 24 hours into a fast, if I was on the floor or sitting and I stand up, I'd get a little for a second dizzy because it would lower your blood pressure. When I added the electrolytes, that was gone. So I felt, I just felt better. I felt more energy. So you know where I go, and this is a little bit more on like the elect, electric uh, conductivity in terms of like uh, your body is is basically conducts electricity, right? To like send impulses. So your muscles respond. So your cut, like your, your brain sort of fires and operates more effectively. So this is like sort of like uh, producing a better environment for that conduct conductivity to, to occur. That's why they call electrolytes. Right? That's exactly what they do. Yeah. That's exactly what that's, that's but but just from like a like you know um, I guess like a, a I don't know how to describe well from a communication the, articulate that you need electrolytes for cells to be able to communicate and operate uh, to each other and work right. they need them um, uh, in sort fact, of like the root function of it yeah in fact do you know how dangerous it is if, if let's say you were you were trapped and you needed water and all you had was distilled water yeah. You know that that's yeah. very dangerous. Yeah, that, no, there's, that would kill, there's, that kill, there's, there's been bodybuilders that have like mm -hmm. fucked themselves up by thinking drinking distilled water would be a good idea yep. when they're also depleted like crazy mm -hmm. too. Like there's some like horror stories from that happening. Yeah, natural uh, clean water in nature is usually high in electrolytes because it's been filtered it's minerals, through. Minerals, yeah. Yes, it's been filtered through the rocks or mountains or right. um, when you get like a, uh, when you have like uh, Purified water, they, they'll add the electrolytes back in. They'll add the stuff back in because, like I said, distilled water is dangerous. Distilled water is like it's the purest water. There's nothing like you can't, you should never drink distilled water. Distilled water is used for other things like medical applications or like it's good for like, like uh, using it for filter filters. Like if you have pumps, like for example, yeah. like the like, yeah, because electrolytes will get caught. In that's the, right, and uh -huh. it'll create like calcium buildups. Yeah, so, or like a neti pot. Yeah, you know, you can so use like it. all my waterfalls and stuff like that that I have, they had the little pumps, and so I use distilled water. Oh, for Oh, because then you don't get the minerals on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I've been getting hit up a bunch by coaches, athletes. So we're getting into summer where a lot of times like athletes and coaches, they structure like more explosive movement, conditioning, you know, that kind of stuff. They're out in the sun and, and, you know, so they're a bit concerned. And this is one thing I, I made sure of like when I was a part of like, you know, that 
that training process of bringing in a lot of the element to the athletes and like introducing them to that, and like obviously giving the alternative to, to take like some pinch, some, you know, uh, mineral like salt or in yeah. their water, but had better result even. I, and I know there's like a breakdown of potassium and, and magnesium on some level, right? Yeah. Like, in fact, I they balance it, it out. Like, yeah. So, so a packet of, um, a packet of element has a thousand milligrams of sodium. So someone listening is like, Oh my God, that's a lot of sodium studies on athletic performance and health. And, and these are healthy individuals about four to six grams a day. Yeah. So four to thousand to 6,000 like, milligrams a day is optimal. The RDA I believe is like two to three, which is off. In fact, 2000 to 3000 in healthy individuals shows worse health and athletes reduce performance. So it's got to be much higher. So this is why elements very different. Other electrolyte powders will have like 200 milligrams of sodium. Yeah. Because everybody's afraid of sodium. So you have to drink like eight of them, you know, or, or four of them or whatever to get the same thing. Magnesium, 60 milligrams, 200 milligrams of potassium. Yeah, so that balance, I just noticed specific because I was sort of, I mean, some kids had their own concoction that they were putting, they were drinking Gatorade or whatever it was. Uh, but in terms of muscle cramps and like, so that was, that was a big issue that we were like constantly battling. Do you know the original Gatorade had more sodium than the, than they do now? Oh, yeah. really? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It was more of a powder that they would add in yeah. and it wasn't this like pre -mixed. Why did they? Because of the whole sodium scare oh, that wow. started in the eighties and nineties. Wow. Remember yeah. these studies connected high sodium to heart disease and it's all like stuff. It's like the whole fat movement and why we started doing non-fat yeah. milk and everything like that. Yeah. So, and what they did is they didn't control very well. So people, if you took a thousand people everyday Americans, okay, and you looked at sodium intake, people with higher sodium have worse health. True. But the reason why they have worse health is because high sodium is in heavily processed foods or a lot of sodium. So if unless you control that for that factor, what you're actually seeing when you see high sodium is these people consume a lot of potato chips, mm. a lot of processed foods, a lot of garbage. Yeah. Now, if you control that and everybody eats healthy and then you look at sodium, now you'll see the, huge the, difference. A huge difference. Very, yeah. And then if you look at people who work out or who are athletes, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to, this is, don't take this lightly. Uh, a little bit too low of electrolyte re drastically reduce your athletic performance. This is a, this is a game changer for it's athletes. True. If you play outdoors and you're in the sun and you supplement with, let's say you put element in your water you'll not notice a little bit of, an, of a difference. You'll notice a big enough difference to where it's dramatic. It's so amazing how mm -hmm. much of this stuff, like I wish <laughs> I wish I had my knowledge now as a kid, as a young athlete, who, especially I since I was like, <laughs> you know, I wasn't the greatest athlete. Like I was the kid who worked his ass off to be able to get, you know, playing time, worked his ass off to make, like it took a lot, you know? I wish I had that competitive edge where I had this knowledge. There's so many things <laughs> Training-wise, I would have done different. Diet-wise, I would have done different. Like, I can't imagine how much that would have helped. Do you remember what your PE teachers would tell you when you would get a side stitch or cramp? Do you guys remember? Just drink more water. No. Well, okay, good. I you mean, guys had good teachers. <laughs> yeah, warm Well, water. I mean, I, that's I, not the full answer, but that was at least something. Oh, well, that was better than what I heard. Yeah. They used to say, don't drink too much water. You'll get a side stitch or a cramp. I swear to God, that's what they used to tell us. Wow. And I thought... Up until I was like in high school, like, oh yeah. yeah, before I go do something hard, if I drink too much, I'm gonna. It's the opposite. <laughs> well, our <laughs> coaches, like growing up, so like we, you know, JV and all that, like they would restrict our water. We couldn't uh, even have water. It was like a weakness. That was common in football. Like, yeah. You saw that all the time, where they had the little, you know, those water sprayer things like that, and then like they, they wouldn't let the players go over there. It'd be like. It'd be their reward for executing so many plays in a row. <laughs> until it's kids like, start passing out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, I mean, you're running a bunch water. of lines. It's like, no, until everybody crosses at this time, nobody gets water. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was like, why are you going to withhold the water? You want to know what's funny? So when I used to, so I was just thinking about this the other day. My dad has always loved salt and people have always given him shit for it mm -hmm. because of course, you know, there's a whole myth around sodium. My dad always worked uh, blue collar work in the sun, in the heat, sweating his ass off, very hard worker. And he would talk, he would tell people, they'd be like, don't eat so much salt, it's not good for you. And he'd be like, I feel worse when I try to eat less sodium, I feel so much better. So whenever I'd go to work for him, especially in the summer, when I was a kid, it's like, like 12, 13, mm -hmm. and we'd be out in the sun and it's like, you're sweating, I'm carrying buckets of cement, we're mixing things out there. He would always feel really good and when my mom would give him like, deli meats like italian deli meats like prosciutto salami like things that aren't even healthy mm -hmm. and he said i feel so good it was a freaking sodium yeah it was a sodium that's why he was feeling so good because we would sweat of our course. butts off yeah of course but yeah. he had no idea yeah. right and, and then of course you know my mom was like you're full of crap it's not the saw 
my dad was right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's I know, why. man. I know. It's just like it's it's the propaganda from yeah. We we all got conditioned that like salt was this just like horrible thing to have too much of. No, you know they used to fight wars over salt. Yeah. You guys know that? Yeah, like yeah. major war. You that was like the original wars were over that, wasn't big it? Big deal. Do you guys yeah. know Gandhi? His like well, his preserve big, meat so much longer. Well, it was like one of the most valuable resources that you could get. Extremely valuable. Yeah. You know, Gandhi's march was for salt. Yeah. Do you guys know that? Like his wow. big ass march. I didn't know that. Yeah, because the salt that they would mine, the British were said that you guys can't have it. It goes back to us. So it was mm. like a big thing. So that's one of his that's one of the reasons why he protested. Oh wow. <laughs> Today's program giveaway is Maps Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale this month. Maps Starter. This is a beginner strength training program. It's 50% off. And then we have the Maps Starter Bundle. Now, this is different. The Starter Bundle includes Maps Anabolic and Maps Prime. It's our best two programs for building muscle, building strength, and speeding up your metabolism. So those are both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of food, I just read an interesting study. They did a very well-made study. Now, it wasn't a huge sample size, but the study was well, uh, well done, where they compared equal calorie kind of make macro breakdown diets, and they tried to see, and then it was crossover, meaning these people ate this diet for a while, and they ate this other diet for a while to see how it would affect sleep. That's all it was. How does an unhealthy diet, oh. which, which, and the way they defined it wasn't higher calorie, lower calorie, it was controlled. It was just heavily processed foods over here, high in sugar, high in saturated fat, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and then healthy diet over here. Whole food natural. Okay, whole food natural, less of those ingredients I could over just, here. You could totally guess easily. The, and it wasn't, the timing was, everything else was the same. Cause I read the study. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, were they eating before bed? Was it more calories? Yeah. Or, I was going to say, and then, one's like closer to Yeah. And they, and they would have them eat one and then eat the other one. And it was a sleep lab. It wasn't uh, reported. Uh, yeah. It wasn't self-reported. So they were actually in a sleep lab uh, monitored with, okay. yeah. Hook, okay. Like, that's cool. So they could see the different stages okay. of sleep. So a unhealthy diet reduced. So to same total sleep. They all slept the same. There was a little bit of a higher instance in insomnia with the bad, uh, the unhealthy diet, but the deep sleep, the restorative sleep, was significantly less uh, in the unhealthy diet. Significantly, significantly. You know what's funny about that point you're making mm. right now is not while, not that long ago we talked about the 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 you know demonization of food and and how there's mm. this movement in the fitness space to not call some food good food or bad food. Everybody in the fitness space can agree that sleep is arguably the most important thing that anybody can do to be healthy. Yeah, yeah. And if there are certain foods calories counted for exactly the same that you can eat that one of them disrupts the most important thing that you could possibly get and one of them doesn't how can you not label one of those good and bad for you oh, right. <laughs> right it's this yeah. whole hey, it's, it's this whole movement where there's like an economic angle to that right like this misconception that like healthy food's so much more expensive and, and there's just so many ways now you can buy in bulk and and strategize uh, uh, to find healthier options uh, but that used to be a big that's pushback. That's one of their selling points for what they're saying. That's not the root. The root is now there's there's a root that's that has some truth into it, which is shame. Too much shame right. around diet can drive people to actually right. eat worse. So, oh, you're eating a bad diet. You're a bad yeah, person. Sure. You're fat. Like I get that. We talk about that all the time. So there's a little bit of truth there, but they go too far, right? They go too far in the opposite direction, which is like, nothing is bad. Everything's the same. Yeah. It's all, and there's also this movement just generally- this Twinkie hugs me. There's this, there's this movement in society to where everything is completely subjective. Well, what's good for you may be bad for someone else. And there's no objective truth and this whole bullshit, like uh, this, yeah, this the kind of philosophy. And it's just, perme yeah, it's just permeating- the health space. So now there's good and bad food. It's like all. the the spiritual universe one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you talking about the <laughs> I saw that, that I saw that tweet. I'm like, you know what? I don't always This is my first viral I, tweet. I don't always retweet your stuff. I don't always repost it, but I'm like, this is gonna stir it up a little bit. I'm gonna send this one out for sure. Yeah. I just think I've been saying this for a really long time. Those of you that have been listening to this podcast have definitely heard me make comments ab about the irony of the people that are you know, anti-religion, anti-God, but then the crystals, universe talk, and it's just like, 
you have no idea how how ridiculous you sound being an, anti God, anti religion, and but being spiritual around crystals in the universe. It's so. <laughs> this is like, the tweet. You have yeah, no yeah. idea. The how tweet plants. that I, the tweet that I wrote. It's my first like like tweet that kind of went off. Is uh, people who refer to the universe when talking about esoteric and spiritual topics want to so bad to say God, but they're afraid of sounding religious. Yeah. So instead of saying God, they say you know, I put it out in the universe. So the universe gave me this or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even say it. I just re I just reposted it on IG and you know, of course the DMS came. And of course the only people that, I mean, I got, it actually got a lot of, it was was actually one of the more viral stories that I had posted in a long time. So it definitely got shared from me reposting it and uh, a lot, one of the most liked and everything like that. But then it, it, it woke up, of course, you know, you can't help but feel triggered when you're one of those people who, refers to everything as the thanking the universe yeah. for everything like that. You're that person, right? Yeah. So you feel the need to come in and defend that. It's, so those are the only people that I got. It's um, so, so I had some people commenting, you know, <laughs> who supported it. Other people were like offended by it. Like one person goes, Reli- <clears throat> you know why I say that? It's because religion is all about power and control and oppression. And this and that I said, all those things you listed are not because of religion. Those are all things that exist human in human nature. Yeah. You take out religion, it's still there. These are still negative aspects of human behavior. Yeah. Religion is just, it's, it's a practice. And within that practice are human behaviors. So you're going to find Listen, it's man, who are gonna be, who are gonna man be is way. flawed. Man yeah. is flawed. And, and man Especially has found groups. a way to wield anything good for bad. Yeah. The more anything. powerful something is. There's the nothing, more, yeah. There is nothing pure yeah. out there that man has not found a way to wield for evil. Yeah. It's a fact. Name it. I'll wait. Yeah, no. There's not a single thing that is pure good that man has not found a way to wield for evil. Of course. It's a fact. And the and more so, powerful it is, and so religion the more isn't uh, religion doesn't isn't uh, an exception. It's a, it's uh, it's in there too. And arguably more because it is such a powerful thing. And so the people of man has found a way to manipulate and use it just like in yeah. anything else. It's like when people blame uh, say well capitalism, you know, it, it, That's right. it, it, greed it created greed. No, 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 greed existed before capitalism. Yeah. If anything, capitalism tries to mitigate the effects of greed because at least with capitalism, if you're really greedy, you got to give somebody somebody what they want before you can get what you want. Um, so it's the same thing. But with 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 uh, with this particular thing, it's interesting to me because uh, religion has been stigmatized. So I think there's a lot of people that say they don't say God because they're afraid of how it's going to sound. Yeah. And saying the universe sounds more accepting or cool or or acceptable. So like in a crowd of people, if I say God, oh, someone's going to whatever. But if I say the universe, everybody's like, oh, cool. You know, it's universe. There's just always a vacuum there. Yeah. Well, look, here's the deal. I remember when we interviewed Bishop Barron, this blew my mind. This is when I was, so I went from atheist to agnostic and then from there to Christian. And this, one of these conversations was the one that kind of moved me in that direction. I remember Bishop Barron explaining how um, everybody worships, everybody does. Yeah. And, and the way that I that he explained it, or at least the way I like to explain it, is it, you know, every decision you make every day is based off of a value. You, you turn left because it's better than turning right. You put on this shirt because you like it more than that shirt. You're, everything you do is a decision because it was better than the alternatives. And if you follow that all the way up to the top, there's a top value that you have. Your actions worship that top value. So if you can say you don't worship anything, but if you study your actions, right. we'll tell you what you worship, mm-hmm. and it's going to be money or power or honor or you know or pleasure. You're worshiping yourself or yourself or whatever, right? So it, 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 we we're making things into God all the time. Yeah. So whether we realize worships, it or whether we realize it or not, yeah, or you become deliberate by it, by it and, and intentional and say, well, I'm not going to accidentally worship some shit. I'm going to try worshiping this thing over here. And that probably, you know, will take, who is it um, along these lines? Jonathan Pajau, he did this great, God, I love that guy. He's, I'm going down his, his know, stuff. Same. He said, um, God, he talked about uh, people who say, uh, people have faith and say that, um, you know, well, whatever happens to me, it's what God wants for me. And he goes, it's not predictive. It's not, you're not saying you know what's going to happen. All you're doing is you're putting yourself in a position to no matter what happens, you could get hit by a car tomorrow, become paralyzed. No matter what happens, the best possible position to be in mm-hmm. is to be in a position where you view whatever happens to you as something God is doing for right. you. Acceptance. I thought, wow, what a powerful way of saying that, right? Because mm-hmm. all kinds of shit may happen. You don't know what's going to happen. But if you view everything as like, this is a gift, this is for me, 
that's the best possible attitude I think you could have. It's, I can't it's think a of release a, of control. It's a release of control, and it's also reframing everything as what 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 is this? Why it's a different perspective. It's a better totally, outlook. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Rather than every like, everything happens for me, not to me. Yeah. If yeah. you come from a place of everything's happening to you, then you automatically default to the victim. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Versus you would totally empower yourself by saying that even in the worst of worst things that happen in your life, that somewhere there's a gift in there. Somewhere there is a a lesson. Somewhere there is an opportunity. <laughs> So everything that happens in my life, both good and bad, and it doesn't matter how traumatic it is, is an opportunity for growth or for something good to come of it. And living in a, a life of optimism like that, it, let me tell you, it's a lot better place to be than on the other side of you being pessimistic and the victim and all these other these outside circumstances are happening to me. It's an awful, awful way to live. Yeah, like I, I, I can't think of a better mindset that is going to give you the highest potential of success because mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows right. what's going to happen. Nobody knows what life is going to throw at you. So rather than trying to predict what's going to happen, um, your best bet is to create a mindset that is the, uh, the best, the best possible way to handle whatever happens to you right. in both good and bad. If something really good, you know, that happens to you, you're, you're more likely to be grateful and more likely to not take it for granted. It's gratitude. And if something bad happens to you, you're more likely to survive it and then become stronger as yeah. a result. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for anyone listening right now, like, uh, like that attitude is just a good attitude to have. That's why it's such a, this is why studies show that people who have that attitude do better. Yeah. They just it do. It just bleeds into all aspects of your pursuits. Like yeah. Whatever it is in front of you, uh, relationships, like your <laughs> Your, your learning, your academic focus, your job, anything. Like, it's just, it's just, you got to think about like, what's, what, what tool is going to serve me best? Yeah. In yeah. terms of my mindset. Yeah. Business, God, you, you, God, you guys know we're all, we've all been entrepreneurs for so long. You guys ever, you guys have known people like this where they have the wrong attitude and they're going to start a business and you know, like, dude, you're not going to make it. Like, yeah. You know, like everything's like, uh, um, you're, you're not resilient. Uh, yeah, like I'm a victim. I can't, oh my God, this is so unfair. The economy, I can't, this is terrible. And you're like, man, you're not going to do this because you're going to have all kinds of struggles and challenges. And if you can't figure out a way to spin that and turn that into uh, something that's going to move you forward, mm -hmm. you're going to get crushed right away because mm -hmm. that shit's going to happen. Um, that's why when you, when, you talk to, when you talk to successful entrepreneurs around business, they all have this attitude. They all have this attitude. I told you about the client I trained years ago who yeah. he told me, I asked him, what's the key to success? And he said, ask me how many times I've failed. And I, he yeah. said, you know, that's the Expect key right it. there. Yeah, yeah. And just to change your, your outlook on it. Absolutely. Did you guys see the news that came out? Uh, it was, this is a while ago now, but I've been, I've been meaning to uh, bring it up. I don't know if you guys saw it. The Lululemon people that were fired, the employees. Yeah, I did. Did mm -hmm. you hear about that story? No. They stopped the shoplifter. Yeah. Got fired. They fired the person that stopped the shoplifter. Correct. Yeah. Do you know what the justification was? Like what? Like why they would get terminated for intervening? Like that? California. I think so. probably. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Maybe Doug can. Doug, look this I up. Lulu, 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 maybe I, I think I might have saved this link because I was going to talk about it. I feel like point. I saw this one time before with like Walmart, where this lady security guard just tackled this guy like that was shoplifted, and but they didn't fire. I think they're. I think they were afraid. I didn't. Say, I didn't say it. I think they were afraid. They might. I'm trying to think. Like okay, like a company. Maybe they're afraid of lawsuits. Like if you stop somebody and you hurt them, or let's see what it says. So they have a zero tolerance policy related to physically engaging with perpetrators. So according to them, Does put it their lives why? and safety uh, at risk. So they're probably like, look, if employees try to engage. They could potentially get themselves hurt, or the customers hurt. I know, but I feel like hurt. that's all. That's this is all legal mumbo jumbo to cover your ass as a company, sure. right? And then so when it happens, me, that's right. So then, so when that situation happens, that's where I pull the employees and they say, "Hey, listen, man, I appreciate, I appreciate what you did. I appreciate that you want to do this." But I know we say we don't not to do this, but yeah, you do yeah job. exactly. It's kind of like a little fist bump behind the door, and, and but it's like, hey, Agreed. Like, yeah. I mean, that isn't that how you handle that? You terminate them? No way. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, cause I, so I totally under, from a legal, from a legal standpoint, I totally understand this, that you would do that for the safety of your employees yeah. and potential lawsuits. It makes total sense to have that in place to protect you, especially in a, in a, a state like ours. So I get it. But then when, so, when an employee does that, 
I feel like I'm pulling them aside and just letting them, Hey man, next time you just let them take it. You know, at the end of the day, it's not like, it's not going to hurt. Especially cause now it's not, now it's all national news. Yeah. You know? So I don't know, man. Now you look like it to me. Now you look like a douchebag for getting rid of them, you know? Yeah. And also, uh, sure. I don't know. It feels like it kind of emboldens criminals a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's all the messaging right. that I'm seeing. That's, that that yes. too. That it looks like, oh, wow. The employees are being told soft, yeah. that they can't do anything. Now, now I'm, now I'm more, well, more. It's, it's the predicament San Francisco's in, you know, it's, it's just like the, you get, you go light on the law and order and then you see criminals thrive. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't, uh, that, that kind of pisses me off a little bit. I would do exactly what you said. Yeah. I would have that policy to protect my ass. And then behind closed doors, I'd take them aside and be like, listen, fuck. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to suspend you for a week. Wink, wink. You're going to get paid. Yeah. yeah. And then when you come back to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, isn't that the move? No, I don't, I don't know. know. I just, I, I saw that and I thought that was really interesting. That's and weak. Being obviously business owners, I thought, man, what would you guys do? I wouldn't do you that. You know that they had to come up with a, a, a law um, and an insurance, I think, behind the law to where if you perform CPR on somebody and you get sued by the person, that this law protects you. And they had to do this. He has a good because, Samaritan uh, Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah. Well, that's because, because people were getting sued. Yeah, you yeah. can't stop, right? Once you start, you have to keep going. Isn't, well, that, I don't, isn't no, that how it works? No, people got sued because they would resuscitate someone and break their ribs, or yeah. I don't want you to resuscitate me. I was trying to commit suicide, right. or shit like that. There's also another one, too, where I thought if you start basically CPR on somebody that you are supposed to go all the way until the... the yeah, but I don't think you're, you're going to get sued if you stop. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. You have to look that have up. Have you guys ever seen someone do CPR, by the way, in real life? Um, it's exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. They, Happened in the gym one time. Yeah. They're going. I've seen it. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. You see, in the no, yeah, normally, normally there's two or three people that will they have support. To take turns. Yeah, they take yeah. turns. You go yeah. for a little bit. The next. So where, where where were we? We were. Um, it was in the snow. Remember, we were somewhere. We were all together skiing. And there was, there was a guy that collapsed. And then. Oh yeah. Up. Where was, was that? That was at uh, North Star. Yeah. Was it North Star? Where were, we, where were you doing there? I was with you guys. He was uh, skiing. He no, was, no, he was no. drinking was, hot toddies. I was drinking hot toddies, bro. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. Even, I wouldn't even. I was looking for the place where the sleds. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot you've been up on the mountain with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, yeah, you must have. Just, you just went up there and hung out. For no, a this guy collapsed, and somebody there. Yeah, it was right behind C us. Yeah, and somebody yeah. knew CPR, mm -hmm. and they were doing it on the person mm -hmm. until the they wait. Yes, yeah, yeah. and I remember I was watching because I'm like, they're gonna get tired. Someone's gonna have to take over. Yeah. It's not like in the movies where they're like doing this. No, it's constant. You got to compress the yeah. chest, dude. It's serious. And that's the protocol now is like, you know, it's just, it's all like compressions. Yes. Ah, yeah. Interesting. So you cannot simply stop providing CPR See? because you feel like stopping. That's right. It's uh, considered a gross negligence and not See? protected by the Good Samaritan law. See? So you can get sued for stopping. Yes, you can yeah. get sued for stopping. Good to know. I got a cramp. If you commit, yeah. you go in and you start. That's not, I don't like you, that. I don't like that, man, because then it scares people to help. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, but you, if you feel like you get in trouble for helping someone, that what kind of society we live in? That's, uh, I mean, that's, that's the deal, weird. though. That, I, you knew, know? I knew it was ridiculous like that's that. That's stupid. So if you step in and you start, you're committed mm -hmm. until the medic shows up. Wow. That's why, too, you'll have like situations like, so I, I, I dated a girl in high school who was a, um, a lifeguard, and so she knew CPR. And a guy had a heart attack and died on the plane. And it was like 45 minutes before they could land. And he was like dead. But she had to continue all the way until they landed. For 45 minutes? Yes. Oh, oh, my God. Yes. Even when his heart and everything. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, yeah. Like, like 20 minutes. Until, a, like, a, until a, a licensed medic came in and oh pronounced him dead, wow. you're supposed to keep going. Until That's got to be the worst place to see something like that. Because there's no, you're, what are you, we're, we're in the yeah. air, over yeah. the ocean, can't do anything. And then knowing, too, like you're continuing to do CPR on someone who probably was dead Nobody 15, like 20 minutes ago. and was like, hey, let me take over. That I don't remember. Like that's, this story is so old. It was when I was okay. in high school. So th there is a chance that maybe somebody else stepped in and helped. But if, if I recall, I think she was on her own. I think she was the only one that was doing it all the way, wow. all the way till they I almost didn't had, know that. I almost had to do CPR at the gym. Almost. Like we called them, you know, paramedics. And I remember like, uh oh, and they came, they were fast. They came there real quick. I was like, yeah. thank God I don't have to get on this and do this. Cause that's terrible. That's scary. It's, yeah. It's you don't want to be it's responsible terrifying. for was like, that at Santa Teresa, especially if you have to use a defibrillator. No. Right? This was a Hillsdale way mm. back in the day. I was a uh, AGM. So oh I was, wow! I was, yeah, I was an 18 year old kid. Mm. So and I'm like, I just learned this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hurry up, get here. I don't want to have you to like do doing this. the math. Like, was it five, was it five one three one doing all the? <laughs> yeah. Well, now that they say just compress, 
Mm-hmm. Like if you don't remember, just go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Type of deal. I think that's what it's 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 switched to completely now. It's yeah. been a long time since I've done mine. Now gyms re- are required. I don't know everywhere, but I know here they're required to have um what are they called? Uh a defibrillator. A defibrillator. Yeah. You're yeah. required to use those now. Yeah. And they've or to have them, I should I think say. the stat we should look the stats on those, but like they've saved oh, so a lot. Many lives because a lot. Of, yeah, well, I mean there, have there, those. there's a there is a cool stat on administering cpr and the defibrillator and like each 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 one each layer like increases someone's chances of living by a dramatic yeah, amount because yes. it just buys them a little more time of getting either some some yeah, air for the paramedics to get there yeah right? two they- things you sh- that you can have in your house that uh actually statistically are um are good to have the Ooh. first one is something for choking yeah the choking that's, that's a big what one i've seen the most when you have kids yeah and then a defibrillator if you especially have somebody in the house that's a little older, have a defibrillator there because it could it could literally. Like, I don't have either one of those. Yeah, I've, I've many times meant to order the choking one, and I never did. I wish yeah. I would have. The damn! I told Although. you guys the damn ad got me because it, oh, I hated the fucking ad. They got me because it was this like ring camera, and it shows this mom rushing her kid out to the grass who's like unconscious. I bought it right away. You see the kid, and you're like, you freak out. <laughs> Man. I bought it right away. Ah, get this thing right now. I don't want this. It's actually here. probably like a really good, a product that sold a ton just because of that simple fact. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's scary. gives you instant panic is apparently like, ah yeah yeah you said you saw your oh kid. it's yeah it's like give you a little PTSD. it was when we were podcasting remember he came the next day was the, the marble he was hella weird about it because he was so freaked out i was so beside myself because it was and literally i didn't know how it would affect me going further on like i was just like in the moment just trying to like solve whatever was in front of me and like try to be calm and cool and collective. That was the biggest thing was just trying to like, like focus, you know, because it was so like, I, I don't know. I didn't this want, was, I didn't want to look at it as like, Oh, like I can't remember when he did it. Did where did you have to get him to the hospital to actually get it out? Or did you dislodge it before? It dislodged it before, but, um, he, it actually, so what happened was he, it actually opened up. Uh, his throat so he could actually he actually swallowed it all the way through and so it went down and then he was able to pass it but it was lodged it was lodged in there and so we had him with his head in the um in the freezer and so he was breathing in all this cold air and it kind of calmed him down into where he was able to get breaths again and then um that's, we, that's i was on the phone having a wife as a nurse you know a nurse, a nurse i would have yeah, never thought to put his head in the freezer okay so yeah. she's yes definitely but also too like she, like it, it she was freaking out and i love you know and i was and i was like she's freaking out she's the nurse you know i'm like <laughs> i'm a damn I'm worthless. I can't imagine having like, you know, a, like an ER nurse for a wife. Bro, and she's freaking out. Freaking out like, this, is why, this is why I was so traumatized because I'm like, you know, she's she's my rock when it comes to any kind of medical issue or thing going on. I can ask her questions. Um, so I just I was on the phone and I'm like calming her down and then like you know I see my son who's like pale and blue and oh is like God. struggling for life. And oh I'm my like, God. Anyway, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> he's like giving night. Bro, hey, yeah. listen. well, you know what? I'm sure if you were to talk to her, she would tell you that. I mean, and, and, and when it's someone else's kid, she's probably super calm and collective. When it's your kid who yeah. you're trying to save their life, like all that shit goes out the window. Well, it's the same. She can't see me bleed either. Like she almost passes out when she sees That's me funny. bleed. Yeah, which is, I'm like, you, like you've like, seen like a gajillion people You're a bleed. terrible nurse at home. You got this. <laughs> Right, it's so it's like well, you're it's amazing at work. Her, you go yeah. home and you, yeah. I can't, you, I can't get it. Wow, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's interesting. Yeah, that, you know what's funny? Those those the scary moments like that, they stay with you. They yeah, stay with you because your your brain and your body create this pattern that's supposed to protect you from ever doing that again. And so what it does is like it becomes this over reactive, overzealous pattern. <clears throat> That's I had to it. check myself on that. Yeah. Cause I noticed I'd act differently whenever like Everett would cough or you'd have some, you you'd know, get that reaction. Like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Like it was just all super like overly reactive. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been working. Oh, bro. That. Years, I mean, years ago, I had if someone close to me, you know, get cancer and then, you know, a long period of, of fighting it and then eventually died. Every symptom anybody had around me, I thought, oh, shit, like there's going to be cancer there. Because I was just, it was just the P- the PTSD from it. Yeah, it's yeah. like every single thing, you know, a coughing too much, or I got pain right here. I'm like, oh shit, you know, maybe it's this or whatever. It stuck with me for a long time. 
it was hard, man. <sighs> yeah. It was tough. Yeah. yeah, they're doing um, some pretty amazing research on um, using entheogens and psychedelics for PTSD. I think that that I can't, I, I'm so excited for that because it's so hard to treat. Mm -hmm. Like some people never, they never get better. They go to therapy, they do all kinds of shit and they just learn how to live with it, mm -hmm. but they never get better. The <clears throat> research on this stuff is so remarkable that it's, it's actually curing people. It's crazy yeah. to me because I know I've shared a little bit of my experience with Katrina and using like psilocybin and MDMA and um, what I think is so fast. In fact, it's so funny. We were, her and I were talking last night and we're just, you know, sharing like where we're at in our relationship and, and things that are going good and this and that. And like, just always trying to be mindful of that we always try and have those types of conversations before anything bad happens. Right. It's like be ahead of that stuff. That's a good. So a I good think we strategy. have this like incredible, like, incredible system of communication like i just it's amazing right i'm so blessed yet using mdma and psilocybin has even broke through and like connected even things for us so i think like man if you're somebody who like when i think about the adam lane smith episode that we had that you know you're you're one attachment she's another attachment and there's so there's this major gap you get in your own way dude yeah you, you get exactly you always get in your way you get in your own uh -huh. way like so like I, I i couldn't help but when we had that her and i were listening to that i'm like man i can see all of our friends like like literally when he's describing all these different attachments I'm like oh that's her that's him that's him that's her that's and like you can see what probably the challenges are in the relationship so i'm like Man, here we are. We think we have this incredibly, uh, this incredible communication system, and we have such a strong bond and relationship. Yet, have experienced what a breakthrough we've had with psilocybin and MDMA before. I can only imagine relationships that have this massive gap and don't have great communication like that. It has to be life changing. Yeah. Have you ever heard mm -hmm. this stuff saying that your you you end up with someone whose bite matches your wound? Have you guys heard this before? Never heard that saying, but I mean, I've talked many times about most people are, that they get with, unfortunately, is they're they are drawn to each other because of each other's insecurities. Well, it, it, there's what happens is on the other end of that, there's good stuff that they're drawn to, but then the bad stuff creates uh, some negative attachments, and then you get in your own fucking way. Like I, you know, Jessica and I can get in arguments, and it can spiral and spiral, and then for some reason, sometimes we'll talk about the same thing, and all of a sudden. We hear each other. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah. what? Like, I know we've talked about this 50 different times, but now, like, you're hearing me. I'm hearing you. There's no, we're not reacting to mm. it or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, MDMA got, originally, that's what it was for. It was for uh, marriage counseling. Oh, so it originally was for that? Marriage counseling. Wow. That's what it was. I did not Correct. know that. Uh-huh. Oh, you know what's Here's what's messed up. This is what's so, this is what's so annoying and irritating and frustrating is that when psychedelics and entheogens like, you know, MDMA and stuff, when those first were, uh, kind of came out, the research on, on them for therapy, for counseling started to explode. Okay. Then because the government, because it was a big counterculture at the time and the government considered the counterculture a threat, right? We had, you know, we had Vietnam war, we had the cold war, you got all these hippies, they're saying some stuff that's crazy and a counter government. Oh my God, it's very scary. What's going on? But we can't throw them in jail because they're just they're they're just protesting. It's just free speech. Like, what, how are we going to attack them? The strategy literally was the drugs that they use. We're going to target, and then that's how we're going to throw them in jail. And it was very effective. But the side effect of that was when they scheduled these drugs the way they did, you couldn't research them anymore. So mm -hmm. if you're so you had this huge protest. A lot of people don't know this. You had all these researchers who were so upset that they all of a sudden could no longer study these compounds. Like you had these count, these people who used MDMA for therapy and counseling who now were like, I can't use this anymore. Like, this is so effective. Yeah. Like what's going on? You know, uh, now some of the laws are being, being uh, loosened. Like I told you guys here in San Jose, you can now do with therapists and doctors ketamine therapy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So that's I'm going right. to do this. Oh, you are. I am. I haven't tried ketamine, so I can't wait to hear your. Yeah, so your experience. I, I'm not gonna. I won't do any of this stuff in that setting without. Uh, and I don't recommend other people do either. The, I, I I'll do it with a, a, a professional. Yeah, I'm a professional. So I'm good. however, <laughs> 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 such a bad, famous last words. 
You be careful, bro. I'm a professional. <laughs> you start coming in, you're talking about Mother Aya. Yeah, right? yeah, you guys. Oh, know, fuck, uh, we lost Adam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We but, lost him. But uh, I, I'm going to do it, and it's with, a, it's with you know, uh, licensed professionals, because I feel like if it's so powerful and effective in this direction, boy, it could go Of course, of course. So I'm going to do it. I'll, I'll, let people, I'll let the audience know. You know what that's like for me, and, and you know. How well, you've already experienced psilocybin and MDMA, so I can't wait to hear your experience with that and how you can compare them. Yeah, so, I, what I, classes is then uh, ketamine in? I know ketamine's a. Uh, well, it's uh, like a tranquilizer. It right? is, but and it, it, it's used as an anesthetic, uh, an anesthesia. I think it's an entheogen. Maybe you can look it up, Doug. Yeah, and see if it, it's so. It's not. So a, what are its characteristics? I guess is what I'm getting at. So I've never look. I've never experienced anything. Like, I've never done it. Um, but, I've been told it feels like a, like a, a, a big dose of like opiates. So like a, hmm. like a Vicodin or like a feeling like that. Well, I hope not. Cause Vicodin makes me feel nauseous. I, I, obviously it's not. Well, opiate, yeah, so. you did not. It's the Vicodin. It's not, it's not the opiates. that's making you nauseous. It's all the other shit that's inside of a, a Vicodin that probably makes you feel like that. But my okay. point is that feeling of that, <sighs> you like you melt into the couch sure, or that, you that I, this is me. Feeling? I have no idea. Okay. This is just what I've heard. So, so I don't, okay, I don't so, know if that's true. So here's how it was explained to me. I was actually asking somebody about this uh, a couple days ago. So I was like, all right, let's, let's, let's break this down. Like, let's explain. And then I've been doing more reading because I know I'm going to do it. Right. So I'm diving in. Yeah. So what keeps your patterns, your brain patterns, right? What keeps these neural connections and these patterns so strong are the emotions connected to them. So if you have this fear emotion over this pattern, it's hard for you to rewire that pattern until you take the fear out. When you take the fear out, that pattern is no longer strengthened by the fear. And now I can look at it differently mm. and I can think about it differently. That's but interesting. If the, that, if, so if the emotion's so strong with it, you just keep uh, strengthening it every that's time. That's so present it when you're in a better like feeling state. 100%. That almost explains the MDMA and psilocybin with the Completely. relationship conversation. Yes. Part of what makes it so hard for a couple to break through on a conversation is the anger and insecurities it around the, you. the trigger. That's yes. a topic. And yes. so if you can dissolve that and it's literally just in like a logical conversation around things. It increases empathy. Yeah. Increases understanding. And then what happens is you create new patterns around that. Hmm. And so- and by the way, this is the theory, but it's backed by neural imaging. So they'll do fMRI and neural imaging, and they'll literally see rewiring happening in the brain. Hmm. So that's what's so happening. So ketamine is currently the only psychedelic drug that is FDA approved. I didn't Correct. know that. Yeah. So that's why I'm doing that one, because it's going to be with a doctor and everything. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to go do black market. <laughs> I'm going to do some therapy, you know, <laughs> I'll buy, I'll come back. I mean, that's work. the hard part about talking about it. Cause I know we yeah, talk about that. I'm like, right. obviously I'm not trying to promote random people just going out and doing all this stuff like that. Like I'm fucking 40 something years old. I didn't do hardly anything when I was growing up. And so like, as I got older and more mature, I got interested like you did in yeah. the science of it. Yeah. You start learning about it. You're like, Hmm, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I'm smart enough and aware enough to not allow myself to go down if the path of use these like very powerful tools. You know, there is, well, I could see how you can, you where... could become obsessed with the tool itself well we saw sure. we've seen it firsthand we have plenty of, of friends in the space the, the health space that have gone down the ayahuasca and freaking mdma so it's considered a path. psychedelic doug yeah yeah that's interesting can you see if it's entheogen i don't know if you know how to spell that so um, is ketamine and entheogen yeah i was looking that up uh so it is a psychedelic it's a schedule three drugged sure um it's considered an dissociative anesthetic okay 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 so dissociative okay that makes sense so you're going to think about some shit that's hard, but now you no longer get those negative ass strong feelings around it. So you can look at it and be like, oh yeah, like I do do that. Or that thing did happen. And let me think about that for a second. And then because it's not so strengthened by the negative feelings. You don't default I'm, to like your yeah. normal reaction. I'm not sure if it's an entheogen though. Okay. Uh, they say like psilocybin. MDMA believe, is. Yeah, an MDMA. Okay. But this one I think may not be. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, I'll let you guys know. Yeah. Everybody know I'm interested in what your, happens, uh, you know, experience. with the whole thing. Maybe we'll get a um, affiliate code. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the more legal market, I think I, I think we have an Organifi supplement to talk about today, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not ketamine. It's not quite yeah, on that. The it's not quite ketamine level. or psilocybin, but hey, pure makes you feel pretty Actually, awesome. Actually, I've been, I've been using uh, a lot of pure lately. I know. I, I guess I'm going to use it today. I did. I've seen you. I've, you've yeah. been back. I always forget about pure because it's subtle. 
uh, and you use it regularly and you forget that it feels good and then you stop for a while and you go back on it. Oh shit, I feel great again. Well, and the best is when you're actually frequently, consistently using it. Yeah. And you feel the best effects of it. Yeah, well, I've been taking it now. This is like the fourth day in a row now. I'll take it before the podcast and I definitely notice a difference. I'm due for my my red juice kick. I know that I've been at my peak caffeine intake for about two or three months now. So I'm overdue. Did I tell you what Justin to, did the other day? No. Caffeine? Did, did I tell you? He snort it? No. He might as well. I mean, he, he smashed beer, beer funnel it in his butt. Listen, he, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he only on the weekends. He <laughs> back to back. So this wasn't like one uh, later. Back to back crushed two big ass nitro coffees. Yeah. Back to back. Woo! That was a that was a hard day though, dude. Like I, <laughs> bro, that's I don't understand how your life that would. I had no I'd have sleep cardiac that, arrest. Yeah. Well, I had like I was just. Uh, beside myself, I was a zombie that day. So I was like, I had to like look at my options. Like, <laughs> like I like, can I have like some kind of like false energy, something to pull from, so I don't sound like a complete idiot. Uh, otherwise, I was just going to be worthless here. So I did that, got this immediate jolt, and then like literally an hour later, I was just oh, on really? the couch. Like that's what pisses me off is like I, once I reach where I'm at right then now, then the crash is massive. yeah, and it doesn't even it. I don't even feel like where I'm at right now is actually not quite the crash because I know better. Like I know the next one is the crash, and so it's like I'm right at the threshold. What's it's your like, dose right now? It's a- uh, six hundred. A day? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So well, my highest, yeah, that was a high. That was a high day crazy. for me. For sure. All in a whole day? Yeah. My highest, my the highest I'll get is 350, 400. Yeah. And yeah. you're normally way lower on most things than me, so that's not bad. So I'm a six highway. Except for peptides. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, that, that you got me for sure. <laughs> Winning. That's Dude, different. goddamn pharmacy right that's now. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Throw another one. Megalodon. Yeah, his like, yeah. his little Lululemon bags turn into a freaking suitcase. I don't have that anymore. <laughs> yeah, dude. I know. He needs a suitcase now. <laughs> Not even have <laughs> roller coats. What the hell, bro? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. What happened to the Cellucor <laughs> bag, dude? Yeah. Yes. I don't, he outgrew yeah. his Lululemon yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was on Bro, now. where did we just I travel? Know, we just, oh, we went to Na- when we went to Nashville, and we opened up all of our – he opened up our suitcase. Literally – he had the same size suit. No, your suitcase was bigger than mine. You have a little bit bigger suitcase than mine. I was like so impressed oh, yeah. that you fit all of your clothes for a whole week in just that one suitcase. And then you opened it yeah. and half of it was dedicated to we, supplements. We were like, where's your clothes? Yeah, would you bring two outfits? Where are they? Like, like, right under here. <laughs> all, like, you guys talk all kinds of shit. But the second one of you guys is like, hey, you're Sally, right. Yeah, yeah, if there's anything we need. I got a headache. You're Sally. my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Sal, I need better sleep. You got something? Yeah. I got something for you, buddy. Yeah, you do. That's you true. Go. You're good right. for that. That's very, very true. Who's the shout out today so I, i've got a shout out uh the other day we did um a, a q a and somebody actually referenced this person did i had no idea who they were they referenced knees over toes guy and then this girl vanja or vanja moves and of course we didn't know who it was so we couldn't comment it on on what we agreed or didn't agree with her stuff until we opened up her page and it's phenomenal uh, her content. She is communicates it properly. Everything really good. good. Great stuff. Really, really good. Yes. I, I mean, not only is she incredibly impressive at what she can do, the way she communicates mobility, strength, and flexibility is right in line with, I think, how we communicate it. And I cannot believe that we had not uh, found this girl before. So, because she's huge, she's already got seven hundred twenty-four thousand followers. So, give her a follow. I think she's great. Hey, check this out. I'm sure you've heard of CBD. It helps with uh, inflammation, sleep, anxiety. But there's a company we work with called Ned that has products that are high in CBD, but they also have the other cannabinoids found in hemp. Why is that important? Because all the cannabinoids work better when they're together. So you want those anti-inflammatory, anti-anxiety, euphoric, procreativity effects. Ned crushes other CBD products. Go check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Caleb from California. Caleb, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? What's Good, happening? Bro. What's happening? Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> you got yeah. it. <clears throat> this is crazy. Uh, I, I just started listening to you guys about two months now, and I used to listen to a lot of different podcasts, and I had a big portfolio of podcasts I used to listen to, and now I don't give them any attention. I just go through you guys' podcasts every single day, <laughs> scrolling through each one at work. So, yeah, you thank don't you. Need I any of those you guys ones. for all the informative uh, information you guys give out there. Yeah, we're the best. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. We don't I'll know it. The most today. modest, too. Yeah. All right, what's going on? Oh, yeah, How can cool. we help you? So basically, um, I've been working out now for about like two years real consistently. 
I've always been a real active person and always have like, you know, played basketball all my life, played soccer been in and out of the gym a lot. But past two years, I've been real consistent about it. <clears throat> and basically back in 2022, when I first started, um, I was at like 150 pounds, you know, I was really like frail and really small, in my opinion. I'm 5'10 uh, right now. And uh, the, basically that whole year I bulked, right? So I was eating around 2,800 to 3,100 calories a day. And at a minimum, I was eating 180 grams of protein. I ended the year off at 196 pounds. Oh, yeah. That's a 40, you the you year. gave 30 to 40 pounds in a, in a year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of weight, a lot of weight. I didn't, I will be a little more spe- specific though on my workouts. I never really prioritized doing compound movements. I really did a lot of like uh, dumbbell work on chest press, never really did any squats or deadlifts just to get into details about it. But beginning of this year, um, I started my cut, you know, hoping that by the summer I'd get, you know, lean stuff, but I started around 2,400, cut it down there for about the first month and a half. And then after that, cut down to 23. And then about three months ago, I dropped it down to uh, to 2,000. And this whole time I've been managing uh, 180 grams of protein minimum, you know, some days maybe 200. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've kind of struggled with the weight on the scale. I was 196 and now I just weighed in today. Actually, I'd finally broke the 170s. I'm 179.2 today. But um, for the past couple months, I've been stuck at 180. And I'm pretty sure it'll fluctuate, you know, throughout the week after after today. But I've been really stuck around there. So my question is, am I going about this cut the right way? Um, well, actually, before that, before I get to that, I took a DEXA scan about a month and a half ago. And I found out that I was 30% body fat. And that was a big, big uh, eye opener to me. And I, uh, that really hit home. I was kind of discouraged by it. But um, I kind of made it a reason to be even more consistent. So now I really just, my big goal is really just to be healthy and be at a healthy body fat percentage for my age and just, you know, look good and feel good. Um, I've always kind of struggled with kind of having a lot more fat on my chest and always kind of prioritize doing more chest work because I've always kind of had that saggier look on my chest. Um, but yeah, my two questions basically are, um, am I going about this right way with my cut and just having the goal of trying to be healthy and, uh, get into a good body fat percentage? And secondly, um, do you guys think I should do a reverse diet? And um, kind of work my calories back up, gain some more muscle and, um, you know, have the ratio of muscle and fat, um, you know, have the muscle way higher, you know? Yeah. Tell uh, me, tell me about your compound lifts that you said, because you just started that this year, you said, right? You weren't really doing squat, deadlift, like stuff like that. So yeah. tell me about your, when did you exactly, did you start doing that? And then what's the, where, where are you at currently now? What's the journey of that as far as your strength okay. goes? Um, so I didn't start doing compound movements until I really listened to you guys. So that's about, I say about two months, oh, Okay. you know? So I started doing squats, um, really have terrible mobility with the squats. So I kind of do heel, heel elevated squats so I can get more depth to, uh, also focus on more quad. I've been doing bench, um, deadlifts all once a week, ever since I started, I don't want to put too much stress on myself. Um, I used to be a big six to seven days a week type of guy, but since I've listened to you guys, I've cut it down to to four and it's felt amazing with a lot more energy throughout my days and it feels good. But, um, my strength has really went up like dra- dramatically. Um, I was, um, doing bench when I first started, it was just a plate, you know, but now I'm repping out like a plate and a 35, for, like three, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. And my deadlift, I started off like just to plate, just to get the form down, but now I'm doing two fifty five for three moving, moving it pretty good. So the strength is there while I'm on the cut, which is a good thing. I think. It yeah, also no. it also explains Sweet. why you're you're stalling on the scale. By the way, yeah. Let's let's pause for a second though. Uh, I want to get something. I want to get something clarified. So you you did de- you did a DEXA scan recently at 179 pounds or 180 pounds. So you went down okay, from when, your- I, when I did the DEXA scan, I was 186 at the time. Okay, so you bulked to 196. Yeah, went down to 186. Got tested at 30 percent body fat. Are you sure that that's accurate? I'm pretty sure it's accurate. I did go to the gym beforehand. Maybe I had a little bit of water before. I know you guys said that can skew the results a little bit. 30% is a lot. That's a high body fat percentage. So do you, do you, cause I'm looking at it. I can't see you. I could just see your face and your neck. Do you just, uh, do you, do you carry a lot of body fat on your body? Does, do, I mean, do you uh, know what, have you looked up online what 30% looks like? And yeah, the reason why I'm, I have. okay. And, and does that seem <laughs> accurate to you? No. Yeah. Something's no, off. Yeah. Something's not right. Now, I, now you pro- you definitely gained some body fat to go from 155, 160 to 196 in a year, because that's a lot to gain in a year. But 
thirty percent body fat's pretty damn high. That's for a guy. So yeah. I think you should go get a different test, maybe calipers from a personal trainer or under uh, underwater weighing, just to get a starting point, and then stop obsessing over the scale and and monitor body fat percentage and strength. Those are the two metrics. I would follow. Now, as far as diet's concerned, I would I would have you do a slow reverse diet and I'd have you train with one of our programs. MAPS Anabolic. Yeah, MAPS yeah. Anabolic. And just focus on getting stronger and don't worry too much about the scale because what's going to happen if you do this right is the scale probably won't move much. You're probably going to gain uh, muscle and, and lose body fat uh, at, at the same time. I actually think that's what's ha happening to him right now. I think you are seeing yourself stall on the scale because you're, you're n saying numbers in two months what you're gaining in your bench and your deadlift is like phenomenal. Yeah, on a and, cut. Yeah, on a cut. So, and actually what will happen if we put you on anabolic, we bump your calories a little bit, you're going to see the strength really go up and you're going to actually visually see a difference muscle-wise. You're going to feel you're going to feel phenomenal. Yeah, do you have um is there somewhere we can see do you have pictures of yourself before and after or something I'll, like that? Instagram. I will give you a little if you guys want to look at my Instagram. Um it's my first and last name. I have like a little highlight reel of my it will say Jim and okay. then if you scroll a little bit, it will show like my back progress. Okay. Um, All right. Doug's going to pull that up because I, I'm having trouble with the, I'm having an issue with your 30% body fat reading from your yeah. DEXA. Yeah. It, it, I will, go I will ahead. say, um, I, oh, uh, he's not 30. I'm looking at him right now. You're not 30%. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I'm looking at your face. I'm like, this weird. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. Yeah. I, I would actually <laughs> even, you're, I mean, Let's see you have a pear body. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm, I would guess you in the low 20s, dude, the highest. Yeah, I knew that something was off. Yeah, there. yeah. At the highest, I would guess. That. Yeah, when I got that, like it really, it really shook me. I was like, "There's no way in hell." Like, where did you, yeah. where did you get yeah, the test on? Deflating. Uh, body spec. Is that a gym or is that like just no? A no, place? that's a that's a company that does the the digital thing. Like that. Okay. Were yeah, they, no, trying they have like trucks you can go like inside and they yeah, do the, no, they're no, bro, you're not, actually I don't even think you're twenty percent, dude. Yeah, what? I, I, yeah, I think he's oh, in the no, no, I think he's no, in the no. teens. You're in the teens, bro. Yeah, did they yeah, try yeah, to sell you something afterwards? Did you, they ask for you to buy for you to buy something afterwards? Look at yeah. Is the is the <laughs> pick of your fat burgers? The, the gym the gym thread you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Bro. No, homie. Yeah, no, no way, way bro. No, you're like you're in the teens. Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're look not. At the, look at the very bottom one, Doug. Go all yeah, the, you're like no, 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 all the way down, down. You're down, like down. You're, you're like the, maybe down. Sixteen percent body fat. I do carry a lot of fat on my chest though, in my trunk area. Go that, to the gym. That's, yeah, but that's I just saw a picture of your it. back. I know what thirty percent looks like. Okay. It, 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 <laughs> so go. unless you store and scroll down shit tons of body fat on your calf or something that last, I can't the see. The last photo. Then uh, no. no, you. My ain't legs right. are my legs are really look lean. At his, look at this before uh, on, and and you're in the thread. You're the reel you're talking about. There's a there's a before and after. There. Oh, one twenty three twenty three. So that that was just in January. Look at this January now. Look at the next one. Keep going. Look at the next one. No, bro, buddy. bro, yeah, you're yeah, no, even, bro. bro you're, you're actually probably you're mid, in the teens, mid, mid teens. You're in the mid teens. You're not even you're not even high teens. Yeah, you're in the mid teens, bro. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's a relief to me, honestly. Con yeah, yeah, I was had a long journey still. You're he's kicking got, ass. He's got definition in his shoulders and his back. No, you're yeah, fine, yeah, dude. Yeah, Congratulations yeah. on your girlfriend, by the way. I saw the the, the next uh, <laughs> Doug actually clicked on that. She's very pretty. Good for you, buddy. There you go. Yeah, listen, good job. Listen, go get another body fat test. Have a someone you trust do like a caliper test or do this. You can use uh, circumference measurements. For men, uh, a waist measurement is a relatively good, accurate measurement of whether or not you're gaining or losing body fat. Because as you build muscle, you're not going to get a bigger waist. Um, and if you gain body fat or lose body fat, it'll probably show up around your waist. So it's not like 100%, but wow. it's, it's a better measurement. I would have you right now focus on getting stronger and put you in a slight bulk and just try to keep okay. building muscle. That's it. What would you recommend? Should I start doing weekly for like a calorie increase, like a hundred a week? Um, what are you at right now? Uh, twenty eight hundred? No, two thousand. You're at two thousand. Oh, yeah. Oh, go up to twenty four hundred. Yeah, right away. Twenty four. Yeah. Yeah, go to twenty four hundred right right away. Yeah. Um, we're gonna send you Maps Anabolic. Follow that program. Do the three day a week version, and you're gonna get strong as hell. Yep. Okay. And um, I will say one thing too. I started doing like a, a, a low carb diet as well recently. Yeah. Uh, would you guys recommend me still stay with that low carb? I noticed that my no. energy kind of fluctuates. Why'd you do low carb? Did you just do it to do it? Because I started doing research and seeing that uh, low carb no. might help with muscle. Yeah. Uh, no, the answer is no. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Add, okay. add some carbs. Add yeah. some rice, sweet potato, yams. Pick some of those. Yeah. Go ahead. Listen, I tell you what. Especially to fuel your strength. Yeah. Give yourself carbs, enough carbs to make you feel good. So, yeah. you know, probably around Maybe 150 or 200 grams. 
grams a day is probably where you're gonna we're gonna settle. There's a there's a wide variance with carbs. Some people do better with more, some people with less. The only people that go low carb that feel great tend to have gut issues or they go low carb and they're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. You just said you have less energy, which is like most yeah. people. Yep. So no, don't don't go low carb. How, how many meals are you eating a day? Three, four? How many? Uh, so that's the, that's the tough part. Um, my days are kind of weird. Uh, I I work all the way in Palo Alto. So I have to, I start around like 245, right? So I have to go to the gym around nine. I said, my whole day schedule is I get up at nine, go to the gym, come home at 12, shower, eat, and then head out the house at 1.30 to get to work. And then at work, I'll have uh, one meal, but I'll have two breaks where I eat like a protein, like Quest chips and some fruit. And then my second break will be like like a protein shake, you know? So real two big, really meals, two big meals. And then um, a lot of like little stuff. To what are you making? Are you hitting your, are you hitting your protein intake? Are you hitting, you yeah. hitting yeah, every day? At least okay. the minimum is 180. Okay. Why, why, why are you doing like, quest chips and shakes on your breaks are they short are they too short to eat food yeah just 15 minutes hmm. do you have a microwave i do have a microwave like i have been able to like like uh warm up like you know like uh ground turkey and some rice sometimes Cal when i have my break how old are you caleb i'm 25 yeah you know what this is a big challenge with guys your age you guys hate cooking so what i want you to do i want you to prep your food and bring meals with you that alone is going to make a huge difference going from like you know high protein Processed foods are better than, than 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 nothing, but on your 15 minute, that's plenty of time to warm up. Shit, I eat food here between uh, answering questions sometimes. T take it, warm it up in the microwave, make yes. yourself some food, prep it, and 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 bring it with you. Have a protein, a little bit of carbs and some fats, <clears throat> and a vegetable, and bring some Tupperwares with you. That's gonna make a huge difference too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to also thank uh, Adam real quick. Uh, I used to do a shit ton of cardio, mm. like five to six um, days a week, doing 30 minutes on a Stairmaster, like eight speed. And then I found you guys and you guys were like, stop the cardio now. I was like, don't do it. <laughs> and I was dying back then. Like I was getting to work and almost passing out on the way to work. You know, I work at Stanford and it's like a lot of walking, you know, so I, <laughs> it's a lot of, uh, fatigue there so i'd almost feel like i'm gonna pass out when i'm standing you know yeah. and i stopped that completely and i've noticed a lot more i see myself lean out more yeah when i just focused on those four uh four um workouts i have a week yep so and i started walking but that started really making a difference yeah so. bro you look great dude. Awesome. You're, you're kicking ass yeah, man you're doing phenomenal right yeah now. go get your money back from that dexa scan whoever <laughs> yeah. gave that to you yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. that's some bullshit i appreciate right it guys thank you so much you all got right. it man thanks all for right. calling yeah. in all right thank you that's annoying, dude. That when you know, and now I ask them if they're trying to sell them something because yeah, I've known discouraging that was. I've known trainers. I I, I don't want. To, I'm not going to say too much, but I've known yeah. trainers. Yeah. To bullshit on on body fat tests totally. to sell people stuff. I've seen well, it. those are those uh, uh, Dexa scans are those, um, and they come around. Some of them come around in trucks. Some of them are, are stationed. A real at, Dexa scan is supposed to be accurate. Right, it's supposed to be decent. He did just lift and drink a bunch of water. Thirty percent from what he did I not mean, even close, bro. I mean, I mean how I much mean, water did he drink? Yeah. Manipulate that far? There's I mean, no way. Well, it also could be at the. I don't. If it could be towards the end of his day or the middle of his day too, he could have had multiple meals. I think a water. DEXA scan is yeah. different than electronic impedance, though, right? Because I think a DEXA scan tells you lean body mass, yeah. water mass, fat mass. I've never done one. Neither have I've I. Heard, I've heard they're pretty, pretty legit. They're supposed to the be time. like electronic competing. They is are, but they all, they all are easily manipulated by water, food, and the time you even a Dexa. Yeah. Did you do them when you competed? Yeah, yeah. I've done all of them. I've done every. Was type a Dexa of, like way off from like underwater weighing or whatever? I mean, of? here's the here's the thing that I, I always tell everybody: they're they're actually not that crazy far off unless you're trying to manipulate them or you don't understand how much you can manipulate them by the time of the day, yeah. the amount of water, and the amount of food that you intake. If you are somebody who eats three, four thousand calories, you're two hundred something plus pounds, and you do a DEXA scan one day at five o'clock, or I mean first thing in the morning with no food, no water, no nothing, and then you compare it to another one that you go at four o'clock in the afternoon, you've had three meals, a workout, a gallon of water, you can make a huge difference in the way it will read. I just feel bad for this kid. He's like, you know, yeah, he's not, not even, even close, close to thirty no, percent. After no, he not. got that reading, it must have crushed him. Yeah, you know, like, oh my god, I, I lost, <laughs> I lost thirty pounds of muscle. Or, or really something. motivated. I'm like, God damn, there's a whole other level of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was doing good. I could tell as he, when he said that. I was looking at his face. I'm like, I wasn't you got sure because he could beers, have like, like, like a major muscle. pear body too. You don't know. That's what I'm saying. As soon as I saw that, as soon as I got to the picture where his shirt was off, I was like, Oh god, no, this kid's doing fine. He looks good. Yeah, he's doing good. Our next caller is Vincent from Ohio. Vincent, what's up, man? Yo, what's, what's up, up, dudes? What's going on? What's happening? 
How are you guys? Good, good. Hey, love listening to you guys. Uh, really fun to listen to. Got a little bit of something in common with each of you, even even Doug. So let me just hit that real quick, and then we'll get to my question. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Really into Asian culture and, and history, just like uh, Doug is. Sal, Metallion, just like you, also have a combat sports background. Justin, uh, work with uh, young high school aged and uh, grade school aged athletes all the time. Sweet. And uh, Adam, we we go to the same barber. I don't know if you've ever seen <laughs> it about me. And um, we also have that same, right. you know, Zen Zen personality where you know we don't get mad too often, too quick. So oh, we you, we kind of got that. I don't think you comment. understand Adam very well. <laughs> you yeah. got Adam. He knows exactly Adam? how I am. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, how he's I am. super Zen. That's I right. <laughs> but if you tip well, me over, you're fucked. Right. That's the deal. So. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Don't push me over that edge. Don't push me. I'm a nice guy, but don't push me. I know how it is. Yeah. So I get it. <laughs> What's cool, happening? So, hey, uh, Real quick, the question here, guys, um, basically, is it okay and okay in a sense, is it beneficial to adapt the MAPS 15 programming to um, other MAPS programs that you guys have? So, for example, like a, a seven day a week split on like an anabolic or a power lift or something like that, where you kind of break those. Usually you guys have three foundational days, break them down. Um, and program it out mm -hmm. so that you can do, you know, two to three, maybe four exercises a day, but still, you know, be touching weights all seven days of the week. It's not yes. only beneficial, it's something that it's we've, great strategy. we've talked about actually doing because it, there's tremendous value in taking all those programs. And we've already recommended yeah, you're it. You're not people. alone in that idea. It's a great strategy. Yeah, Vincent, not only, not only is it a great strategy for time, but um, yeah, I'm going to be careful with how I say this, but uh, there, I don't think it's equal. In other words, same volume, same frequency, same exercises. You would think you would get the same results. I'm going to veer off and say that you probably get better results by dividing things up so much. In fact, if you ever get the time, you can even divide up workouts to do, you know, twice a day, do two exercises, the more two out. Like the more you divide things up, uh, the more you, it seems like you get these kind of strength adaptations. Now the challenge is time constraints and all that stuff, but um, no, and it's great. At the very least, you're going to get the same results. So there's, there's no problem with it. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Cause I, I've been working out for a very long time, 25 ish years. And I'm, I'm always like a three to four day a week with weights and then either like a mobility or a functional or something else on, on the other days. So, um, I didn't buy the maps 15 program out of like a, a time constraint thing. I know you guys always talk about it's uh, ideal for, for parents and, and people like that. I, I got it more for, the discussion that you guys always have about the the optimal versus the what your body can stand versus the too much and working out for as long as I have, I, I think I've always sort of pushed myself further and further towards the too much. So doing doing the 15 has been great. I love it. I love hitting the weights every day. I love the short workouts. I love having the extra time to do other things. So yeah, that's that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So I can take other maps programs and as long as I'm smart enough to, you know, kind of devise the right programming. Um, you know, not do, you know, squats and deadlifts on the same day, make sure that they're kind of spread out, you know, throughout the week. Then, then that yeah. sounds awesome. Exactly. You're, exactly. You're, you're, yeah, you're right on point. Vincent, dude. let me ask you this. How have your, how has your results been, uh, since you've been kind of messing around with that type of, uh, programming? So I followed, um, the first program that I bought from you guys was symmetry. Cause I'm, I'm big in unilateral. I love it. So when you guys put out that program, I was super pumped. So I did symmetry first, then I went to RGB in that order, did symmetry again. Um, and then got maps 15. I'm in the third um, phase right now. So I'm in the kind of the five by five phase and, and I feel great. The phase prior to this, I've never felt the pumps that I felt with those, you know, four sets of 15 and, and things like that with the, the, the major movements. So results have been fantastic. And obviously that's, you know, what led me to ask this question is, I don't want to get away from that. I want to, I want to push forward and continue with that if wow. I can. And yeah. it's, it's somebody you're yeah. experienced too is perfect. Cause yeah. I mean, you, I mean, just the fact that you said, we said about squats and deadlifts tells me, you know what you're talking about. So do you have uh prime pro and prime? Cause those are, those are great for somebody like you. I do. I have both of those as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, well I don't know Champion. what to send you. I, know. I was going to give you something free, <laughs> you but tried. you got everything. No, you don't have to give me nothing. I'll, I'll, I, I buy what I need from you guys. I support the cause. I, you know, I appreciate it. Give it, give it to somebody else who, who needs it and can't afford it. I'd, I'd rather pass it along to the next person. Uh, I appreciate that. Vincent. Thank you, man. If you're ever in the area, you let us know, you come say, Hey, Absolutely. I'm on the other side of the country, so I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm in Ohio, but yeah, I would, I would, I would love to at some point. That would be cool. You got it, man. All right, man. Right Thank on. you.
One one more comment, not even a question. One more comment for Justin. Justin, out of the mo- out of the guys, I know you kind of listen to the the heavy music the most. That's what you guys talk about. I got a band for you. I want you to check out. Okay, they're called Pale Face. They might melt your face off, but I think you might love them. They're from <laughs> Switzerland. They're a metal band. Pale Face. Check them out. Pale Face. All right, I haven't heard of them. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks I'll, I'll, I'll do that. All right, Vince. Rock on. Appreciate you guys. Have a great time. Take it easy. Yeah. Man. What is it about like <laughs> guy, those yeah. that area of Europe that puts out the heaviest shit? I know metal? it's cold. You know, <laughs> yeah, Vikings, like, so you're angry. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a Viking <laughs> thing, but they were like, you know, there's a lot of like crazy black metal and like yeah. you know, crazy metal bands awesome. out there. Yeah. yeah, this whole listen, uh, if you're advanced, like this is like a hack. This is like, you can unlock some crazy stuff by train. That you know, this, what you don't want to do is just add more volume, okay? Because that's what you can do, but. Dividing up workouts, increasing the frequency, making your workouts happen more often but shorter seems to to be more positive when it comes to muscle building and strength. It's yeah. pretty remarkable. I've done I've done this to the extreme where I'll do a, a workout every other hour or uh, one day or whatever. It's pretty crazy. Well, I mean, I, I just personally, I felt that uh, each time I'm performing the exercise, like I just perform it better. Cause like, I'm not fatigued at all. Yes. And then, you know, I, I'm allowing my body to recover. I'm repeating it the next day. Like I, there's definitely something to it. Well, I also think that you, you, um, indirectly increase volume without trying to increase volume, meaning like, cause volume is a formula of sets, reps and weights multiplied. So you're stronger. So you're stronger. I'm only got to do two compound lifts. And so when you're I know, I, to, yeah. I know I got to hit two compound lifts. Like I can, I can get an, an extra rep. I can get an extra five, 10 pounds on the bar. Yeah, great point. And then mm. I'm fresh again the next day when I get, when I only got two exercises to do again. Right. So, so the overall grand total. So increases. I know all the, yeah, I know what all the research says about if, if the volume is equated exactly the same, but let's, it's not the same. I think what happens is that you, because you break it up like that, you not only get the benefits of increasing frequency, practice the stuff that you always tout, but then in addition to that, I think you indirectly mm. increase volume without trying to increase volume. Yeah, and you don't right. think you are, cause you're like, I'm not adding exercises. Yeah. I'm not adding sets. So, you know, the volume should be the same, but I think you're just stronger. Yeah, no, brilliant observation. That's great. Our next caller is Sydney from California. Hi, Sydney. How can we help you? Hi. Oh, wow. This is crazy. I didn't think I would like lose it when I saw you guys. But um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, starting out, just like thank you for everything you guys do. Um, I started listening to you last November after starting my coaching business. And not only have you guys like helped me be a better coach for my clients, but you just helped me personally with like my own health and fitness as well as like personal uh, life, just opening my mind when it comes to new perspectives and especially like with parenthood. So, um, I really appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. So my question, I'll give you some background. Um, I've been lifting for about 14 and a half years. I've done everything from bodybuilding to powerlifting to CrossFit to Olympic lifting. And I'm currently 31 years old and just focusing more on strength and hypertrophy right now. And In my current program, I do legs three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mondays, I typically do my pause squats. Wednesdays, I do the hip thrusts. And Fridays, I've been doing deadlifts. And I'm training in my in lower rep ranges and um, really pushing the weight right now. Um, The problem that I'm I've been having is my back is just not recovering from deadlifts. And so when I go into my squat day, there have been multiple times now where I'm going in for my first set and it's like a warm up set. I just have 135 on there and my back immediately locks up. I, I can't do any squats like with weight for the rest of the day. And um, so I'm not really sure I am. I have like, I'm taking salt in with my water. I'm drinking electrolytes. I'm getting good sleep. I'm eating 2000 calories a day, 160 grams of protein. Like I'm, I'm just not sure where I'm going wrong right now. Easy fix. <laughs> this, this is a, yeah, a movement. Easy thing. fix. Mm-hmm. So real quick, um, when you're, when your back isn't sore or, or tired from deadlifts, then you're okay squatting. It's just because you do the deadlifts on Friday. Come Monday, you're still kind of tired. Correct. Okay. Look, easy fix. There's an easy fit. It's a programming problem is what it is. Monday, squat. Wednesday, deadlift. Friday, do your hip thrusts. That's it. Okay. That's cool. it. You're done. Yeah. You'll, you'll have you'll have Thursday, Friday, 
Saturday, Sunday. By the time Monday comes around, you're going to be able to squat. You won't have a problem from the deadlifts. So I would do the the hip thrusts on Friday instead of Wednesday. Do the deadlifting on Wednesday. You could also follow one of our programs. We yeah. For you. Why don't we just give her Maps Anabolic to follow, which is I basically. Have, okay. I have a lot of your programs. <laughs> okay. Do you have symmetry? Have you done unilateral training for a block? Okay. I've done some. I have Anabolic, uh, Performance, Aesthetic, Symmetry, oh Maps God. 15, Prime, those are the ones I have. Yeah. So did you just <laughs> did you just choose to create your own? Is that what what's going on here? And you didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like was like, what can I do on my own? <laughs> How long have you been training? Uh, like coaching and training people, or or training yourself? Um, myself, fourteen and a half years. Um, awesome. I just got into coaching other people last year. That's awesome. And you said you warm up with one thirty five on the squat. Yeah. Yeah, you're strong. Good job. Yeah. What are you deadlifting? <laughs> Deadlifting, um, my max is three forty-five. Woo! You. Yeah, you're crushing. Oh, yeah. Listen, this is so. So, here's where the intricacies of of programming really start to make a. Yeah. They always make a difference. Okay, yeah. so it's always important. But the stronger oh, you are, the better. The higher you perform, the more every little piece makes a difference. Like, if this was like the typical person and they weren't as strong as you are, they haven't been training as long as you, you your weren't. programming's actually okay yeah. with what mm -hmm. I've seen. Okay. I don't know what all your program looks like, but with what you wrote would be fine. But you're lift, I mean, you're pulling 345 yeah. off the ground. You're female. That's a shit ton of weight yeah, for you're taxing your body. Yeah. Right? So it's literally, this is like a, a simple programming fix. Literally switch the hip thrust for the deadlifts and you're fine. Everything else is fine. Okay. Awesome. All right. Sounds good. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. Of course. All right. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was expecting. You know other what, things. though? I mean, the highlights, though. Um, you know what? With it, so many people <coughs> think that uh, you just do exercises. Yeah. I it's but ice cream flavors, right? Yeah. My remember favorite, remember my when our friend said that? My favorite quote ever. I know. Like, <laughs> workout programs are like ice cream flavors. It's like, yeah. dude, no, it's not. I like this, orangesicles. It's not that simple, actually. No, and one this is, is a, chocolate ice cream, one's a bowl of poop. And this is a, just a great example of that, of like, you know. It looks if, like ice cream. And if you're weak and you're not, like and you're just getting started, you could get away with subpar programming yep. and still build muscle, but then you really see the difference. But the truth is, if you actually have good programming from the gates, you, you'll get even better results. And so it yeah, makes it's it all always good. important. But I tell you what, if you're, if you're advanced, if you're strong, if you're kind of like at those limits, uh, small programming mistakes become big ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if you train a top level strength athlete, uh, like the smallest mistake with programming is, is big with the, mm -hmm. with the beginner, it's not that big of a deal. Still makes a difference, but it's nothing. But like someone like her, that's why I asked her how much she was lifting. So I'm like, wait a minute, you warm up 135. How long have you been lifting? What's your deadlift? Okay, now it makes sense. Yeah. Like that's all. That's She's getting after it. 345 is taxing yeah. uh, for a man, let alone a yeah. female. And you know, Friday you think Saturday, Sunday should give you enough rest. But when you're pulling 345 as a female, yeah. And you're squatting a lot. If she's warming up at 135, I bet you she works up to 225. Yeah. Then all you got to do is move it so that it gives you more time in between. So you know, easy answer. Easy answer with that one. Our next caller is Sarah from Illinois. Hey, Sarah. How can we help you? Hi, guys. This is so cool. Thanks for having me. Thanks for calling. Um, big fan. So a um, little bit of background about me. I've been working out for weight training for roughly 12 years now. Um, I've never experienced, luckily, any type of injury, any type of issue with lifting. Um, and lately, I've been experiencing really bad sciatica pain. So my question for you guys is what type of workouts should I try to avoid? What type of workouts should I kind of focus on um, just to, you know, because obviously now I'm like psyching myself out. I don't want to have an injury during my lifts, um, especially during like leg day or back day. Um, so kind of looking for suggestions, maybe some tips and whatnot from you guys. Yeah. When, you, when did you start feeling this? Did something happen uh, or was it kind of like this gradual thing? It was like a gradual thing. I, I felt it in the right side of my hip and I thought, okay, it's, it's, it'll probably go away. And then it just kind of started gradually going to the back of, to my back, lower back. Um, and then it kind of going into my glutes and I had the pain maybe for like three days. It was like horrible pain. Have, have you taken our maps prime test? I have not. No. Okay. Well, there, there's where you start. We're going to send you <laughs> maps prime. Because what we we need okay. is yeah, and you go through the test, and we'll see what 
your ability to to rotate, to squat full depth and zone one, and I, I'm sure you're going to see something. There. So I'll, I'll give you something that might give you some immediate relief. So this is not acute, right? You didn't you didn't like injure yourself, right? I just want to double no, check. No, nothing like that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and do you have a job where you sit down a lot? Yeah, I was just going to say, did that change? Like, do you sit a whole lot more now? No, no. So I actually do medical sales. So I'm like on the go all the time. So I'm never, I mean, I'm sitting in my car maybe for like 40, 45 minutes uh, driving, but okay. I mean, majority of it, I'm on my feet. Okay. Yeah. So I'll give you some, so the sciatica is a nerve that kind of runs, I guess, through the back of the, the leg, the glute, and sometimes the piriformis, this is where it's common. Okay. This isn't always it, but yeah, this is where it's common, especially with people that work out a lot. Um, and if you didn't injure yourself, the reason why I was asking those questions, sometimes you get a lower back injury that can cause this, but, um, oftentimes it's the piriformis muscle getting really tight for a variety of different reasons. It could be you didn't exercise a particular way and strained it. It could be that the, there's some hip instability or some ankle instability that's causing the hip to do something, you know, more than it needs to. So the piriformis will get tight. And when that happens, it presses right on the sciatica. And so oftentimes what people feel is this kind of tight, tense muscle mm -hmm. pushing on this nerve. And it feels like, it can feel like heat or electricity or just kind of like pain that's kind of radiating through the leg. Sometimes it goes all the way down the leg. Um, so there's a couple things you could do for, for immediate pain relief. One is there's a seated piriformis stretch that you can do that oftentimes immediately alleviates some of the pain. So are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Do you know what this looks like? Uh, no, no, I don't. Okay. Can you see me? You can see me, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to show you on camera. So you want to sit with your leg crossed. So ankle on your knee. So it's like this figure four kind of position. Okay. Push your knee down, stick your chest out, really give yourself really tall posture. And then with that tall posture, bring yourself down over your leg until you feel a stretch and then hold that stretch for 60 seconds to maybe two or three minutes even. Okay. So long static stretching temporarily tells the central nervous system to chill out a little bit. And so what you're stretching there are some of the hip muscles. One of them is the piriformis. Mm -hmm. And it could tell the piriformis to chill out. For whatever reason, it might be just active and tight right now. And if you notice some pain relief right away, like you stand up and you move around, you're like, oh, that kind of feels better, um, then that's probably what we're dealing with. The second thing you can do is in the same position that I showed you with the stretch is you can mm -hmm. get on a foam roller – Okay, so like the, the tube foam roller, sit yeah. on or it. Or lacrosse ball. Yeah, well, lacrosse ball is going to be gnarly ball, at this point. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, 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 but, yeah, tennis ball. But I would sit the way I'm sitting now on the foam roller. Then I would lean on the uh, towards the hand uh, of the hip that I'm stretching and kind of move on the foam roller till you hit that tight spot and then sit on it for a little bit. Make sure you breathe because you want the CNS to chill out and let that, let, let that muscle kind of relax a little bit. And that should alleviate... Yeah the pain uh, somewhat right off the bat. And then you would do that maybe two or three times a day until you started feeling better. And in the meantime, you would avoid exercises that hurt it, um, but you're probably okay doing everything you've been doing. And then from there, once it feels better, look at your workout and see if something's missing. And oftentimes it's ankle instability or tightness or it's lateral stability issues. Lateral stability issues means like you might be doing lots of bilateral squatting and front squatting and pushing a sled and that kind of stuff, stiff legged deadlifts and hip thrusts. But are you doing anything laterally where you're going sideways like a Cossack squat or even a basic abduction, right? Mm -hmm. Where you like, like the, where you bring your leg out type of deal to kind of build some lateral stability. Cause if you're lacking some of those, some stability, um, then, then the piriformis and some of those other muscles that are sitting on top of the sciatica, sciatica could just be tight because you're trying to create stability there. Your body's yeah. trying to create stability. So relieve that, like you said, with, you know, some foam rolling uh, and then put it into action and do some of these active kind of mobility drills uh, like your 90-90. Uh, so you get internal, external rotation over the hips, uh, you know, combat stretch where we're addressing the ankles, uh, even like an active pigeon, something like that. that's going to be a little tense for, you know, the pain that you have right now. So you can also elevate your knee. Uh, to, to, you know, kind of gradually add some intensity there. But, you know, in terms of that, it's just like we're opening up the potential for movement uh, so that way you can come back and kind of strengthen the instability. Yeah. Are, are you able – you're sitting in your car. You're, you're parked, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I'll, I'll be like, don't drive and do this. 
Are you able? Are you able to test out the stretch that I just said right now? Do you have room in your car? Yeah. Car with the steering? Yeah, I actually have my leg in the same position that you're showing me. Okay, so. you, you just did it right now. Yeah, try okay. to test it out. <laughs> okay, now now sit real yeah, tall. Fold, so yeah. so push yeah. the knee down with your hand. Okay. Sit really tall. Like stick out your chest. Sit real tall. You'll probably feel a little bit of a stretch in the hip already. Do you feel that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Now maintain that posture and bring your body down towards your leg and see if you feel. Like stirring them. If you feel the stretching oh, yeah. of where yeah. that is, do you feel that? Yeah, oh, definitely it, feeling that. Is that the spot <laughs> that you've been feeling? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Even like brush this morning when I kind of went down lower to the sink, it was like a yeah. like a five second yeah. like a shock pain type thing. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So while you're talking to us, I want you to hold that stretch a little bit because then yeah. when we when we're done, I want you to take your leg down and see if you still feel that pain. See if it feels uh, any better. But I, I, it sounds like that's what it is, and you can even look up. Yeah. piriformis syndrome yeah because it online. gets real tight and it pinches on that nerve so i mean that's just something that uh, can happen and if it's just a tight muscle that's good news you we've know? actually got a bunch of great youtube videos on this that's oh we do Ooh, we don't do. we yeah. do we have one where we're doing that specific all yep. right yeah we there have all is. we have all this we have active pigeon in there we have the 9090 we even have the seated uh i think we do it in, instead of seated we actually do it on an elevated bench or whatever so yeah, yeah. We, we have all this if you literally go to youtube and just go mind pump Low back pain, or you could put piriformis in. You could put any of those. Or askmindpump.com. Uh, right? Yeah, that'll probably do it too. Askmindpump.com. Yeah, we have a new uh, see AI model. refers you. Yeah. Uh, all right, take your leg down okay. and see if you feel any different. Thanks. Do, do you feel any different? Yeah, definitely feeling like release, which is kind of crazy because for the most part, I thought, hey, it's a nerve. I don't know how much more, how much I can really do to it. It's different when you have like muscle tension. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just releasing some of that. Uh, yeah, it definitely does feel better. Yeah, good. <laughs> It is a nerve, though. It's being pinched, right? Yeah. It's got pressure. Right. It's got pressure on it. And then what we're doing by stretching is relieving that pressure. Yeah. And so that's all that you need to do. I mean, I would also... So we're going to give her Prime Pro. Is that what we said? We're going to give you Prime Pro. Yeah, that's good. Because that'll have I mean, some of those movements. I'd also... I'd al right? I'd, 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 or symmetry. Oh, yeah. there you oh, go. Yeah, yeah. So I would... Oh, beautiful. I, I would go symmetry. Uh, she'd benefit from all the unilateral work. So I think... That'll uh, give her that stability. I think prime, prime Pro, the movements for your hips and ankles and stuff like that, that's going to address all that, uh, getting you ready to go into your workout. And then I think symmetry is a good a program yeah. for you to follow. For so right now it feels a little better just from that stretch? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right. I've always Especially wanted... I've always, like, more room, I think. That'd be... Yeah, that'd be better. Good. I've, yeah. always, I've always wanted to say this, but you're healed. Yeah. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for right, <laughs> Stand right. up and walk. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I stand up and walk. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah. hey, hey. Can I tell you something yeah. now? Sal, you missed your calling. I know, no, 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 never, never, never going to go in that direction. I, uh, I tell you what, there were certain things that I used to love hearing from potential clients because I knew that nine out of ten times I had the fix and I could show them right then and there. Yeah, Sciatica was one of them. For Whenever sure. somebody came with I'd be like, oh, cool, I'm going to fix this person. They're going to hire me for like 50 yeah. sessions. This is going to be easy. But that's that's that's, that's typically common. We didn't, very common. We didn't mention it, although I think on YouTube, I'm sure uh, Andrew will be able to put her. She had a, a picture of how fit. She's incredibly fit. She also has a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt, yeah. too. So I don't know if you saw that, which will exaggerate this issue. I don't know if she's posing that. You know, I mean, even if she's posing, way. it's exaggerated enough that that's like if you're practicing that, I'm sure that she's got a little bit of that, which probably exaggerates what she's got going on. But yep. yeah, doing, I mean, this is also uh, to highlight, okay, for the listener, like, why we recommend maps prime, prime to everybody first is that you should go through and this would get highlighted when she does like the windmills like totally. you would see you would see the discrepancy from her left to right uh she'd have a hard time probably doing this on the side where she's got this issue so this is the point of everybody having maps prime as like this is how we would assess a client before we put you on any of our programs we'd run you through this assessment see your movement from left to right up and down see the discrepancy and then we would make sure to include those movements and as we build the routine yeah let me add one other thing by the way had she gone to her doctor with this oh god the prescription would have been a cortisone stop, shot stop stop this yeah stop it would have been stop exercise yeah, stop and i'm going to inject your butt with oh, cortisone and then what it'll 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 make the pain go away now why it's a very strong anti-inflammatory and it atrophies 
the muscle that it's injected into. So we're going to put it in the piriformis area. Oh my God, it's going to hurt for a day or two. Now it feels all of a sudden so much better. Yeah. And what we've actually done is increased the instability. Yep. So then the pain comes back, comes back six months to a year later. It gets worse. Another cortisone shot. And then you end up becoming a regular yearly cortisone shot client. Otherwise, if I don't get that, my worst attitude, attitude, thing attitude. ever. That's so right. Is, yeah. Look, if you want good quality, truthful fitness information, ask mindpump.com. It's an AI model that bases its question, excuse me, its answers off of all of our episodes. So we filter it for you. Now you don't have to deal with all the crap from the fitness industry. Askmindpump.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin, at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 